In the previous video, I talked about how FPGAs are being used in high frequency trading or HFT. And many of you asked for a deeper dive into how FPGAs actually work under the hood. So in this video, we'll explore the foundations of FPGA technology, what makes them different from CPUs and GPUs, how they are structured internally, and how we use HDL language like Verilog to describe custom hardware logic. We'll break down key concepts like logic blocks, LUTs, programmable interconnects, and IO blocks, and explain what happens when you program an FPGA. Not with software instructions, but configuring the hardware itself. By the end, we'll have a clear picture of how FPGAs achieve their speed and flexibility, and why they are so powerful for industries like finance, telecom, and AI. Let's get started. A field programmable gate array or FPGA is a special type of integrated circuit or IC, which just means a chip that contains many tiny electronic components like logic gates, memory, and connectors. What makes an FPGA different from a regular chip like a CPU or GPU is that it's not locked into one function. You can reprogram it even after it's built, allowing it to behave like a custom piece of hardware. Think of it like a blank Lego board. You decide what kind of structure to build a calculator, a video processor, or a network switch by wiring the pieces together however you like. Inside the FPGA are small, reusable units called configurable logic blocks or CLBs. You can think of CLBs like reusable Lego bricks. Each one can perform simple logic tasks like AND, OR, and addition. What makes them powerful is that you can combine them in different ways to build complex hardware units. Inside each CLB, there's a tiny component called lookup table or LUT. Think of a LUT like a very small hard-coded if-else table that maps inputs to outputs. If you are a software engineer, a LUT is like a pre-filled hash map or a function table. In this case, the LUT is behaving like an XOR gate. Instead of hardwiring a logic function like an AND or OR gate, FPGAs use LUTs to simulate the behavior by storing a truth table. This means a single LUT can be reprogrammed to act like a small logic function. Now, inside an FPGA, there are a lot of wires that carry signals between different parts of the chip. These wires aren't fixed. You can decide which blocks they connect. This customizable wiring is called programmable interconnects, and it lets you control how data flows through the FPGA to build any digital circuit you need. IO blocks are the parts of an FPGA that connect the chip to the outside world. They sit next to the input and output pins and can be set up to receive data, send data, or stay idle. This makes it possible for the FPGAs to talk to external devices like sensors, displays, or other chips. Now, to program the FPGA, you don't write traditional code like Python or Java. Instead, you use a hardware description language or HDL, like Verilog or VSDL. HDL doesn't describe step-by-step -step instructions. It describes what the hardware should be not what it should do. So when you write a code in Verilog or VSDL, you're not directly saying, put this value in this LUT. Instead, you're describing what logic you want, and the FPGA toolchain, like Vivado or Quartus, figures out how to implement that logic using LUTs. For example, here's a Verilog code. You write this code in Verilog, and the synthesis tool will recognize that an XOR gate is needed. It will look at available LUTs, and program one of them to behave like a two-input XOR gate by setting its truth table accordingly. Now, a synthesis tool is a software that takes your HDL code, say written in Verilog or VSDL, and translates it into a hardware circuit. Specifically, it figures out how to configure things like LUTs, flip-flops, and routing inside an FPGA to match your design. It's like a compiler, but instead of generating machine code, it generates a netlist a low-level blueprint of how logic gates and connections should be laid out in hardware. So in essence, HDL describes a behavior. Synthesis tools maps that behavior to LUTs and wiring. And finally, bitstream is generated to program the FPGA. And here is how it fits all together. IC, or integrated circuit, is the physical chip like your computer's CPU chip. FPGA is the programmable IC, like a custom VM you can design. CLB is the basic building block like a function block. LUT is the tiny logic brain in each CLB. And HDL is the code that describes what logic should be built. 
Now that you understand how HDL code configures the logic inside an FPGA, let's zoom out and see where exactly FPGA fits in the broader computing world. Think of the hardware landscape like a spectrum. CPU, GPU, FPGA, and ASIC. Each of them offers different trade-offs between flexibility and performance. CPUs are built for maximum flexibility. You can run any program on them, but they aren't the fastest at any one thing. Think of operating systems, apps, scripts. They handle a few tasks at a time and juggle them well. But that comes with overhead and unpredictable timing due to things like context switching and caching. GPUs are like massive teams of mini CPUs that do the same thing, but in parallel. They are perfect for graphics and machine learning. Anything with lots of similar operations on big data. Still, they follow fixed pipelines and you write code for them using languages like CUDA. FPGAs are reconfigurable chips. You design the hardware behavior itself. They are much faster and more parallel than CPUs for certain tasks. And unlike ASICs, you can reprogram them even after deployment. If your algorithm is predictable and can be pipelined, like in trading, telecom, or compression, an FPGA can beat a CPU by orders of magnitude. And finally, ASICs, ASICs are custom-made chips built for one purpose, ultra-efficient and ultra-fast. But they are expensive, time-consuming to make, and cannot be changed once built. You can think of like Bitcoin miners, Apple's neural engine, or Google's TPU. Now, of course, FPGAs aren't ideal for every workload. They are harder to program and not great for messy, irregular tasks. But when you want speed, control, and flexibility, FPGAs give you the unique advantage. One of the most powerful real-world applications of FPGAs is in HFT or high-frequency trading, a space where speed is everything, and decisions made in nanoseconds can mean millions gained or lost. In the early days of HFT, firms pushed the limit of software, using ultra-fast CPUs, network tweaks, and even GPUs to gain a speed edge. But over time, these software-based approaches started to hit the limit. And that's when FPGAs entered the picture and changed the game. Why? Because unlike software running on a CPU, an FPGA can process data directly in hardware without waiting on the operating system, network drivers, or shared resources. It can receive raw market data at 10 plus GPPS, filter, pass, run logic, and send trade orders, all in line with no software stack in the way. From HFT to telecom to AI at the edge, FPGAs are already powering real-world systems where speed, predictability, and custom hardware logic matters most. In the next video, we'll connect everything, showing how the FPGA development translates into these cutting-edge applications and why this technology is shaping the future of low-latency computing. If you're curious about where software meets hardware at blazing speed, don't miss it. Subscribe, share, and stay tuned. We are just getting started.